So a few weeks ago, the uh, great reporter of All News Jewish, Ron Campius, tweeted that uh, Sarah Posner brings a whole lot of Jewish to any conversation that she joins. So I'd like to thank Jacques for inviting me here so we can test Ron's theory. <laughs> um, so just to be clear, uh, nothing here that I'm saying should be taken as an endorsement. I'm just, this is just an assessment, my observations as a reporter and uh, uh, analyst about the election. Um, so there's been a lot of talk, obviously, we've been talking about it here, about the fight for the Jewish vote. Uh, and I think that that's based largely on a Republican effort to define the Jewish vote based on the claim that President Obama can't be trusted to maintain the U.S. relationship with Israel. And I think that this is a concern that's largely confined to the Beltway and Las Vegas. Um, public opinion polling um, and a lot of anecdotal evidence shows that the relationship between the United States and Israel, um, or a concern that it's in danger, ranks very low on the list of American Jews, the factors that go into American Jews' uh, decision making in the election. Um, the 2012 American Jewish Committee Survey of American Jewish Opinion found that 61% of respondents either approved strongly or approved some out of the way that President Obama is handling the U.S. relationship with Israel. Um, and I think that the Republicans are aiming for the others, the ones who think that Obama has an issue with Israel, um, a problem with Israel, or the undecided people who are on the fence are perhaps persuadable. Um, and I think the Republican Party is doing this by stirring up suspicion about Obama and about, the, uh, about his trustworthiness on this issue. Um, and the idea that the Jewish vote or the that, that there is even a Jewish vote um, that, and that it could radically swing Republican is just, I think, a myth. Um, and I think that there's a lot of super PAC involvement in this election cycle and a lot of super PAC strategy. And spending a lot of money to win over actually a tiny segment of an already tiny constituency. Um, but that obviously, it, you know, in the swing states that they're targeting, it could make a difference in the election. And I think that we should care about this um, because it could make a difference in the election um, in addition to small board efforts that are underway um, to analyze and shift the voting habits of Latinos, women, Catholics, um, or other key demographics. Um, we should be concerned about this because of the possible impact on the election, but also about the, uh, the corrupting influence of money, um, not just in this context, um, on our political process. Um, but I think we should also be concerned about this sort of targeted campaigning because it foments myths about what, and you can fill in the demographic blank here, what certain voters want. Um, Catholic voters don't all vote on abortion and contraception, in fact, quite the contrary. And for Jewish voters who are overwhelmingly liberal, as David was discussing earlier, they aren't deciding who to vote for exclusively based on the stalled Middle East peace process or Iran's nuclear ambitions or even national security concerns. Um, if you were to pay a visit to a synagogue in my home state of Maryland this fall, you would find that many of the congregates are not worried about whether President Obama is sufficiently pro-Israel, and the definition of that, I think, is subject to debate what pro-Israel means. Um, but they're working to support uh, referenda that are on the state, on the ballot in, in Maryland this fall on marriage equality and the DREAM Act. Um, and people aren't talking about whether Barack Obama is poised to betray Israel, and that's not because they don't care what happens in Israel. Um, it's just that they know that these partisan accusations about Obama don't bear any relationship to reality. Um, and that they have everything to do with conservative efforts to portray the sitting president as somebody who is an outsider um, or, or has fooled people, fooled people the first time around um, and might really show his true colors in a second term. And I'm taking this actually from uh, ads and web videos that are out there that are targeted at Jewish voters and, and aimed at creating suspicions about uh, President Obama and his stance on Israel. Um, one hint about what's really on the mind of Jewish voters, I think, lurks in a largely unnoticed question in the AJC survey. Um, and that question was, what did respondents think of Mitt Romney's choice of Paul Ryan as his running mate? And Paul Ryan obviously is best known not for his foreign policy cred, um, or even to hit for his commitment to a religious right agenda that's largely opposed by American Jews. Um, although he is actually a devoted opponent of abortion and same-sex marriage and has sided with his fellow conservatives um, 
in the campaign to portray insurance coverage for contraception as a dire threat to religious freedom. Um, but I think Ryan's better known for his draconian budget plans that would continue lavish tax breaks for the wealthiest and while gutting Medicaid, Pell Grants, food stamps, um, and create this uh, probably the largest uh, redistribution of wealth in American history and increase poverty and have a terrible impact on the middle class. And so when you look at the AJC survey and the question on, on Ryan, 41% of the respondents said that they disapproved strongly of Romney's selection of Ryan as his running mate, and 21% said they disapproved somewhat, and I think that that adds up to a much harsher Jewish indictment of the Republican economic agenda than of the Obama administration's stance on Israel. Uh, and so I think the Republicans are hoping to capitalize on or improve upon McCain's 22% of the Jewish vote uh, in 2008. And uh, this came up during Jennifer's discussion, uh, the question of whether uh, Sarah Palin was a negative uh, for the Republicans uh, among Jewish voters. Um, and I think that's for some of the reasons that I think Jennifer talked about, but I think that there were questions about Palin because of her connections with Jews for Jesus, the Christian right, as, as Jacques pointed out, um, and Christian Zionists whose apocalyptic, you know, Jennifer talked about this in terms of uh, Christian support for Israel, but I think that Jews also see a flip side of that or another side of that support for Israel, and that is apoc apocalyptic visions of, of what's going to happen in the end times, and it's a, it's a scenario that Jews don't fare very well in. So I think that, that the suspicions about Sarah Palin were uh, driven in, in large part by that, um, probably more than what, what Jennifer's hypothesis was. Um, but I wonder if Ryan's economic agenda uh, would prove similarly uh, repellent to Jews, um, if obviously for t entirely different reasons. Um, but still, the Republican Party um, is looking to win over a small number of, you know, peel away a small number of Jewish voters in a small number of swing states uh, based on the claim that President Obama can't be trusted or can't be a trusted friend uh, to Israel. Uh, the Republican Jewish Committee is reportedly spending six and a half million dollars uh, to convince even, even a tiny fraction of Jewish voters, particularly in Florida, Ohio, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. Uh, so in Florida, uh, voters are seeing billboards that are part of the RJC's uh, My Buyer's Remorse campaign, which is uh, trying to focus on voters who voted for President Obama in 2008, um, but have quote unquote buyer's remorse. And these billboards say, Obama, oy vey. <laughs> uh, and I just, I, I'm, I'm wondering really how many people are gonna be persuaded by that, but uh, that's just me. Uh, <laughs> And then other swing states will be targeted by door knockers, uh, two million pieces of direct mail that the RJC plans to um, send out, according to a report that appeared last week in uh, the Center for Responsive Politics. Um, and the RJC has a nine minute web video called Perilous Times, uh, which ominously discusses that things have changed in the US relationship with Israel since Barack Obama became president. Um, and even the Anti-Defamation League's Abe Foxman told Peter Stone, who wrote this report for the Center for Responsive Politics, um, that some of the quotes that were used in that video, including from Foxman himself, were skewed, selective, and frequently out of context. Um, and if you watch even, um, a, if you watch this video, um, which is also part of this My Buyer's Remorse campaign, in a vacuum, and not knowing or ever, ever talking to any actual Jewish voters, um, you might conclude that American Jews and similarly Israelis view Barack Obama as somebody who's been essentially a traitor to Israel. Um, and in the film, uh, Barry Rubin, um, who's an American-born writer living in Israel, uh, says, no Jewish American should vote for Obama on the belief that he's a great friend of Israel. And then the narrator says, um, you should think about whether Obama will really have Israel's back when the chips are down. And in Israel, so the, the, the Republican campaign to peel away these uh, possibly undecided uh, Jewish voters um, is taking place in Israel as well, um, where uh, it's said that there's a, a vote from um, Romney is a mitzvah. <laughs> 
Um, and the journalist Roy Ruttenberg reported from Israel that both Republicans and Democrats living in Israel are making phone calls to Americans and uh, Jewish voters in the United States. Um, although I don't think that Democrats living in Israel are necessarily representative of uh, uh, Jewish uh, voters in the United States or even Jewish Democrats in the United States. And the Daily Beast recently reported on the activities of a 501c4 group uh, called I Vote Israel, um, which is permitted under US law to engage in issue advocacy, but is decidedly pro-Romney and is helping Americans living in Israel um, who vote Republican, incidentally, at roughly the same rate that uh, American Jews vote Democratic um, to obtain and send in their voter, um, their absentee ballots. Um, Mark Zell, who is the co-chair of Americans Abroad Israel, told Ruttenberg that in the United States, the Jews don't have a clear picture of their own interests and they get clouded by all kinds of other concerns, including their traditional inclinations to liberal social and economic policies. In Israel, we focus on what's good for the Jews. And Zell told the Global Post that Jews in the US have got their heads up a particular cavity. We're trying to get through to them that they have been deceived as Jews, but then they're not voting as Jews, they're voting as liberal, liberal Democrats, and it's just irrational. Uh, so, uh, speaking of irrational, just this morning I got a press release about a sort of shadow foreign policy debate that's gonna be going on tonight as the uh, as President Obama and Governor Romney have their foreign policy debate. And it's sponsored by the Tea Party Express, and it's being joined by a Tea Party Express affiliated group called We Stand With Israel. Uh, and I never really thought of the Tea Party as a pro-Israel group. Um, and I think that uh, American Jews are probably a little skeptical of the Tea Party. A 2001 Pew survey found that just 15% of American Jews agreed with uh, the agenda of the Tea Party. So that was sort of an interesting, I thought, interesting development, the Tea Party getting involved in that sort of, um, that sort of issue, I think, is, is uh, sort of a new and interesting development. Um, so I think that sh shifting attention for a moment from uh, the, the election per se, I mean, I think that American Jews are starting to notice the religious fundamentalism that's charting Israel's course. Um, there's been widespread outrage over the arrest of Anat Hoffman um, for praying at the Western Wall. Um, but as Rabbi Jill Jacobs, who's the executive director of Rabbis for Human Rights North America, lamented recently, American Jews are slow to tie this to politics as opposed to religion. They're more easily outraged by the official mistreatment of Jews in Israel um, than they are um, of the Palestinians. Uh, and I, I think that that's something that is starting to change, but I think that that's one of the reasons why the, the question of, well, what, is, what does it mean to be pro-Israel? And I think people are starting to question, well, I'm looking at the right-wing trajectory of the Israeli government. I'm questioning the, uh, uh, the, uh, the occupation and the whole settlement enterprise and whether that is actually good or bad for the future of Israel. Uh, and so I think that, that people are starting to, re, to question and redefine what it means to be pro-Israel and do, does that mean that, that you support uh, the right-wing trajectory and the religious fundamentalism that's, that's starting to guide Israel, has been guiding Israel over the past several years. Um, so I think Jacobs is right, and I think that, that, that American Jews are, are kind of more outraged by this religious fundamentalism that's targeting fellow Jews, like Hoffman. Um, uh, but I think that it's a sign that, that they're outraged by that. I think it's a sign that they're paying attention to what's happening in Israel, um, as opposed to um, paying attention to questions about you know, whether Obama is sufficiently pro-Israel. Um, and so I wonder if this, this Republican strategy has sort of a limited uh, utility and, uh, or a limited duration. Um, but uh, I think that we'll probably see in this election cycle, and probably it's not going away in any time soon, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe it will have limited utility this time. So happy to take some questions. Thank you so much. Sarah. Sarah Posner, Senior Editor at Religion Dispatches. Questions from the audience? I know I have a few. So let me ask you this. Uh, I'm sure you noticed that a couple of weeks ago, Representative Ryan was in Provo, Utah, interestingly, and he was asked about school prayer, something that I thought had been dormant since the 1962 Angle v. Talley case. He said something very interesting. 
He said that he thought it should be left to individual states to decide whether there should be prayer in public schools. Uh, uh, the only folks who brought that to my attention, I think it's very interesting, were Jews. And, and it was a news item that went completely off the radar, but everyone I discussed it with, everyone that asked me about it was either a Jewish journalist or a Jewish academician. Mm -hmm. What did you make of that when you heard it? Well, I think that uh, he, that, that was a, that answer is sort of, I don't want to give an answer kind of answer because leaving it to the states is sort of a typical, I'm a federalist, I, you know, I, I don't want the federal government telling the states what to do. But I think the reason why it would raise alarm bells to, to Jews or any religious minority is if you leave it to the states and you have a state where there's a strong religious majority or a, a town where there's a strong religious majority um, that wants to impose a certain type of school prayer, officially sanctioned school prayer, which is, you know, as you said, unconstitutional, <laughs> um, uh, would be alarming, I think, to end, you know, it, it would be alarming to Jews, it would be alarming to Muslims, it would be alarming to atheists, it would be alarming to any anybody who's in that minority position. Uh, it would be alarming to Baptists, let's say, right. because it would be a Mormon establishment. <laughs> right, presumably. right. I, you know, I don't, I don't know that uh, the LDS Church has taken a, a strong position on school prayer or not. I, I've, I ha that's just not something that I've paid attention to. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you referenced near the end of your remarks uh, two terms. One, the, the occupation, and two, the settlement enterprise. What is your view, and why did you raise that in the context of this election? Well, I think that there's a lot of discussion, uh, that the whole discussion here is what is the Jewish vote, and what do Jewish voters think about the two presidential candidates? and. I think embedded in that, in the discussion of what is the Jewish vote and what do Jews think about the U.S. relationship with Israel, um, there has to be a discussion of what American Jews think of the occupation. And I think, uh, uh, I can't remember who it was I was having the blogging heads discussion with, it wasn't you, but I was discussing the AJC uh, survey, which you know obviously is very useful and we all look to, to, to see what Jewish public opinion is, but it doesn't ask about that. Um, and I think, you know, you're seeing, you know, J Street, Peter Beinert's book, Gershon Gorenberg's book, Peter Beinert has this uh, uh, project at the Daily Beast. So people are starting to discuss these issues. It doesn't get discussed a lot in politics. And what I was saying is it should be discussed more in politics because it's something that's being discussed among American Jews. Okay, and uh, my assistant director and colleague, Melissa Weinberg-Spence, tells us that we have to move on. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you. Sarah Posner of Religious Dispatches. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you.